Right, so let's move into obesity and weight. So you obviously weighed bearded dragons in the wild. What did they weigh? Yeah, so um, yeah, so when we went through, um, you know, in this graph here, from what 161 to 162 animals, um, average weight 341 grams, um, and males about 372 grams. So, um, you know, they, I, I tell you right now that most of the captive ones coming in are heavier than most ma- the average male. Um, and it's, and we're talking some really big males. Males, these animals out in the wild, uh, you can see that they're bigger than anything that I've seen in captivity. And these captive animals are coming in heavier than some of them. So they're just fat. So it's just fat. Um, yeah. As I said, wild bearded dragons are super lean. They're like boxes, you know, they're just, um, you know, wiry, um, you know, not really carrying any fat on them. Um, in autumn, we did find some very large animals. Um, males, as you can see, there's a maximum male. He weighed 553 grams. So if someone told me that their bearded dragon weighed 553 grams, um, I'd say, okay, that's not the fattest one I've seen. That's, yeah, they're, um, a lot of captive ones are, are reaching 600 to 800 grams and they're extremely obese. Um, but you know, they're, they are lean out there and you can see they're not fat. Um, they're, so how we tell a lot of the body condition of them is we feel their, uh, inguinal fat pads. So we feel just inside their, their belly, just in front of their, uh, in front of their back legs. And we feel two, um, objects in there, which are their inguinal fat pads. And, you know, usually they're about you know, in a healthy dragon out in the wild, they're about the size of my pinky. In a lot of these fat dragons we see in captivity, they're about bigger than my thumb and this part of my hand. That's how big they're in. And they take up most of the abdominal cavity. And because there is no separation between the abdominal cavity and the thoracic cavity, the chest cavity, it pushes up on their lungs. And some of these animals really struggle to breathe. So, yeah, so, you know, I would say that, you know, yeah, they don't need to be lean as a wild animal, but I wouldn't want them more than 10 to 15% heavier than a wild animal at equivalent. Because once you start getting the weight, you start getting fatty liver disease, females that have um, uncontrolled uh, egg laying and stuff like that. So they're they're only laying in the wild because of the excess calories. Yep. So if you look at any wild species, um, they need excess calories to reproduce for the females. Um, it's what they do. You look at birds, um, you know, once the food becomes abundant, they start laying eggs um, and they put excess calories towards that. So in the wild, if they've got enough food, they'll lay. If there's no food, then it's self-preservation. Just survive until they can breed. So, um, you know, in captivity, they're food all the time, excess food, and it just overrides their females natural, um, you know, stops to tell them not to breed. They just go in and then they, um, ovulate without not being fertile and then have infertile eggs in captivity. So, what role does obesity have on basking in behavior in captivity? So a big problem is obese dragons. So reptiles in general, they'll, when they have excess stores, they store it within the body cavity. Why? Because fat's an insulator. In an endothermic animal like us, we store it under our skin, on our bellies and stuff like that. Um, and then it also, it keeps us warm. We tend to get hot because we're trying to, we're keeping the heat in. 
in a reptile, they're trying to let the heat in. And extremely obese reptiles, once they fill up their internal, um, in, in the coelom, in their body cavity stores, it starts laying it under their skin. And that actually insulates, um, you know, it stops the amount of heat getting into their body. Um, and it makes them harder to thermoregulate. We commonly see it, you know, oh, I've had my basking spot at 38 degrees. Yep. It's one and a half degrees higher than the preferred optimal body temperature, but they had it at that temperature since it was a hatchling. Then it got to 300 grams and then it's like, okay, doing all right. But once it becomes five, 600 grams, heat that mass, that's more than a hundred percent extra mass than a normal one. And you're still using that marginal heat available. So a lot of these big dragons are coming in with, um, you know, secondary bacterial infections, problems related, and they go, oh, yeah, we have it at 38 degrees. And then as soon as you, they come in, I tell them to crank it up to 42 degrees. The dragon starts basking. It gets better. Um, obviously, it gets hungrier because it's warmer. But we try to get them to lose weight. But it's very common for these fat dragons to get secondary um, you know, conditions due to not being able to get warm enough. And also the fact that their livers, they've got fatty liver disease. Their liver is responsible um, for the immune system as well, producing um, the immunoglobulins. So a bad liver means they have a poor immune system as well. So that contributes to it. Oh, and what I've got now is I've got pictures of all three of our dragons. So we're talking about body condition all, all this entire episode. So I thought it'd be good if we can get you to judge the body condition of our animals. Then we're not yep. taking some random person's fat dragon of the internet. We're using our animals and that can be the baselines for people watching. So let me start prepping an image to show you. I think we'll start with my adult female. Um, so let me share this screen one second. So right. when we talk about body condition, we usually use a scale. So a scale when we do it is between is it's either usually out of five or out of nine. And you always use an odd number because there's a number smack bang in the middle, which is perfect score. So um, which scale <laughs> would you do you well? When you think about body condition score, what would be something that's easiest? Out of nine or out of five? five for a veterinarian, probably. out of nine is probably easier for us because it has little, you know, those little in betweens. But for the general public, I think out of five would be. I would probably say out of five because that's yeah. what you get taught at like college level and things of like that as well. So. Okay, so out of five. I would say that this dragon here is about oh, upside down. Um, I would say it's almost smack bang on perfect. So, wow, um, and we're done. <laughs> so this is um, similar to uh, what we see in, uh, you know, an average male that is out in the wild um, is at the back of his head, um, the fat pads, they're not too large. Um, it can be a bit deceiving in males, especially at breeding season. They develop these massive, because they're, they're biting muscles. So they develop these large muscles there. Um, but you look at the tail, um, it's thick. It's not emaciated. Um, you don't see, um, this kind of like in really fat dragons, they get the fat and then it goes dips back down where the, um, Spine is in the tail. So. Right, I'll take that. I'm happy that she's not on either end. It'd be easy to fix to give her more food than to get her to lose more weight, I suppose. So, tail is nice and round. Head muscles good. What species is this guy? It is. It is Vitsips. Yeah, is it a morph? Leatherback? Yeah, he's a uh, leatherback. Yeah, okay. Um, now the question is, has he been fed just prior to this photo? If he hasn't, I would say he's probably a three to three and a half because his stomach looks quite bulgy. 
No, yeah, he's full of food. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'd take it probably just down to a, it's, it's just above perfect. So, you know, instead this of, is, you know, this is the male that I was saying he is just coming up to a year old now and, yep. he's and sits he's still small on the palm of my hand. So, yep. yeah, he's a tiny boy. Right. There we go. Let's share this. There we go. That's the female. She's good. Perfect. Tail's good. Back of the head's good. Do you have any, like, I, do you have any on the, like, I'm showing their belly as well? I've only it's, got it's, top downs yeah. to show, like, like angle of the bulge yes. and stuff. Um, a day so on the side. Something I mean, that I would consider other than just looking down on them is actually palpating their inguinal fat pads, which is, it gives me a lot better. In in the clinic, it gives me a lot better idea of um, condition and what I can say is, you know, perfect or maybe lose a little bit. Interesting. So, are they a lot leaner than what most um, clients dragons that you would see in yes. practice? Yes, a hundred percent. They they would be in the less than ten percent of animals that come in. So, that are perfect. So. Um, even if you look at them, um, I would say that they're, they're probably a bit more, a bit more conditioned than what we could, I saw in the wild ones during the time that I was, um, doing my trial, um, which isn't a bad thing. It just means that, you know, if something bad does happen, you're not dealing with an emaciated dragon if they got sick or something like that. So, so, um, no, it's, they were very good condition. Yeah, happy with that because it was intentional to keep them leaner as well. So I'm happy that we've got it spot on so far. It's it's, it's difficult because like I've done like adults, and I, you can look at your videos and you can see you find adults and you're like, okay, I can look at that and that and try and get to that. But that transitionary phase of like baby to adult, that's very hard to gauge for me, and I don't think I've got there yet. But thank thank you, I think that's gonna be really helpful for people that are like got a transitional stage animal as well. Yeah. So that's perfect. So let's move on to some more general health questions then. What's the average lifespan of a bearded dragon in the wild? The clip you've just watched is just a snippet of a larger podcast episode where we had Beard Vet on the podcast. If you want to find the full podcast episode, you can find that up here. Or if you want to carry on looking through the Beard Vet Explained series, you can find the rest of it down here.